What's up, guys? Welcome to a much belated 2-bit podcast. I'm back! I'm back! Now, I know that I promised more podcasts throughout the year, and I really didn't succeed at that, but I'm, I'm here, and I'm trying. I almost wanted to call this the quarterly podcast because literally I think I had a podcast at the beginning of the year, and I didn't do another one until, like, fall, and now here I am, at, we're almost at winter, and I'm back again with another podcast. So, nearly a quarterly podcast. I didn't do a podcast in the spring slash summertime, so I'm not even quite at a quarterly podcast, but here's hoping with the new year and putting 2020 behind us, I can get some more podcasts out, maybe on a weekly, two bi weekly basis, depending on what topics are out there to talk about, and what have you. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into what you're playing. And what I am playing, or what I've been playing, I've been playing a lot since the last time I was on here, but I'm just going to go over what I've been playing within the last month or so. And that is, I finally went through, uh, what was that game called? Oh, I'm spacing out on its name. Well, this is a great start. Um, freak, it's, uh, Before the Storm is the subtitle. Um, Life is Strange Before the Storm. I beat that, and I start on Life is Strange 2. Haven't really gotten deep into that. It, it's a lot like the Telltale games, um, so I enjoyed that somewhat. I also finally got around to beating Doom Eternal, and I also played and beat the DLC Ancient Gods Part 1, so once Part 2 comes out, I'm ready for it. I also played through Mafia Definitive Edition and beat that, and I am currently playing through Gears Tactics, which I have thoroughly enjoyed that game. It's a lot like the XCOM games. Um, it's turn-based strategy, but uh, I would say XCOM is a much better game. It, it's just, there's a lot more diversity there, just the it's hard for me to explain without going into a full review. Suffice to say, uh, Gears Tactics is a good start for this series. Um, it's a good first game, but you can tell that they can do more and they can do better. And maybe it's unfair that I'm basing them off of XCOM, and they've been working at those games for for years, if not you know more than a decade. Uh, if you just count what's been on the console consoles and and the PC, I'm talking, of course, about you know XCOM. Uh, the the first 360 title, and of course X XCOM 2, and of course you had that weird third-person XCOM that we don't really talk about a whole lot, but that one too, if I just even think about just those three core games, you know, they've been at it a lot longer, where Gears Tactics, this is their, this is the Coalition's first try at that, and it was a good first try, even though I, I feel like they recycled some levels, so you, you, like, you go through repeat, and there's like a lot of the game, game modes are, uh, the, the the different modes, like there's like capture, and then there's where you have to go capture a certain objective and hold it, and then there's like uh, one where there's an airstrike, so you have to keep moving forward as there's an airstrike coming in. Of course, there's rescuing people and what have you, and it's like it, they just got like those three, maybe I'm missing one or so missions, and that's mostly what you do in the game, and then there are some main story missions that are stretched out throughout the game I'm, I'm in act three there's only three acts of this game so I've gotten really deep into this game but um like I said there there isn't a whole lot there it's like bare bones but you can tell that this could be a really good series uh the story is very basic but I enjoy it you're playing Gabe Diaz uh Kate Diaz is Kate the main character from Gears 5 you're playing her dad and it's kind of following him along at the beginning of the Locust War so it it's it's decent. I see a lot of potential. We could kind of, I can kind of see them, you know, maybe they'll still follow Gabe Diaz and see, you know, how he hooks up with Kate's mom and how they start that whole little faction that lives outside the cog, how that all gets started and them dealing with the locust and even the cog and, and what have you. They can go down that route or I still think Gears Tactics a future installment is a perfect way for them to explore the Pendulum Wars, which I think were only really referenced in the main games and I want to say you I think it's the intro to Gears 4 I want to say there there's a little part where you're playing in the Pendulum Wars but it's just like this little tiny section um, of the game and I think Gears Tactics would be the perfect 
the perfect title, the perfect IP to tackle the Pendulum Wars and really go in depth in in that that big war that happened in the Gears universe. And I think this game, I'm hopeful. So this is a good start, but it could be better. And that's that's what I've been playing. So if you guys would please let me know in the comment section below what you have been playing. All right, now let's move on to the Game Awards that happened fairly recently. I believe I'm about like a week, week and a half late to the party on this. Well, no, about a week. My math is bad right now. Sorry. But yeah, uh, the Game Awards happened. I'm honestly... Sometimes the game that I personally feel deserves um, whatever awards are given out... Um, they get it, but for the most part, there's a lot of games I feel that don't quite get the recognition they deserve, and it's honestly because I think the the fan, if you will, or the population, when we get to vote, I don't think our vote is holds as much weight as the industry does, because they also let industry people vote as well. So I, I think that how their how the game awards voting works is, you know, they uh, the the they open it up to the people and the people only represent or or at least they don't represent I would say their vote share only weighs a certain amount where you know all of your industry people have a much larger share of that pie in particular gaming journalists and they're not bad people by no means uh, but I will say the game developers and the gaming journalists, all of them, they kind of live in this this group think. <laughs> you know, it's like this hive mind almost, or this, not really hive mind, I should say, but this group think. They all hang out with the same people. They all like the same stuff. So there's just this, there's a group think there. So when there's, there's games that come out, there's certain games that are really popular in their circles. And so that's what they vote for even though the mass populace will be more into another game. Um, it, it, it's interesting because, in, in my personal opinion, it's mostly working class people that buy and play games, the vast majority of them. And But then you get these professional managerial class people who are developing the games, and not all of them, again, there's a lot of, you know bootstrap and indie developers who are not a part of this group but um but you know especially the game journalists and, and what have you and they have a certain perception or point of view of the of the gaming world that doesn't necessarily sync up with the rest of the people who buy video games in particular what i'm talking about is i thought animal crossing by far was the game of the year doesn't mean it was the best game this year but it definitely was. It swept. It was a craze. It was a phenomenon. And for them not to get the nod and get Game of the Year, I I just... Uh. And then for The Last of Us 2 to get it, which, I mean, Last of Us 2, in my opinion, wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't great, uh, but it wasn't also bad. People who were, like, shitposting on it, um, they're stupid. Uh, it, it was an okay game. Um, it, it's like every other Naughty Dog game. Lots of walking around, crafting, lots of dialogue. I mean, it's no different than the first Last of Us, in my opinion. I mean, you could probably argue the first game had a better story, maybe. But, you know, it, it's by no means, compared to other Naughty Dog games, lesser. But I don't think it deserved Game of the Year. I thought Animal Crossing had earned that spot. For sure. And that's just my opinion on that. I'll get out of that tangent with that. Let's get to the main part of the Game Awards. The Game Awards this year, they were kind of eh. Eh. You know, not that great. Not memorable. Um, but there were four things, in my opinion, that saved it. Number one is Bioware letting us know that they are not dead. They teased us with another... Uh, Dragon Age teaser, we got the Dread Wolf, we got all kinds of cool stuff going on, you know, you're going to be able to play a new character it looks like, which is tradition in Dragon Age, You each game, each installment, you play a completely new character, your old character is still somewhere in the background, and they acknowledge, hey, we have, 
you know, there was the hero of Ferelden, and then there was, you know, Hawk, and um, also uh, now the Inquisitor. So I'm pretty sure they're going to acknowledge all those past characters and honor your playthrough on those old games, but they're going to give you a new character to just slip into and explore and experience the world. Uh, it will definitely, for newcomers, that's always welcoming for newcomers, where it's like, hey, you can buy this game, you don't have to have played the the older games. Um, so that that is a plus in my book for that. I'm excited for that. I'm a, I'm a fan of Dragon Age, but not as big a fan of Dragon Age as I am of Mass Effect which that teaser was awesome. Uh, I am excited because it looks like we're getting a sequel to the original trilogy um, because Liara was in the trailer, and she looks... I zoomed up on it. She looks pretty old, too. But then they also, I think, they teased Andromeda because the beginning shot of the teaser, you see two galaxies. And um, I could go on and on. I actually want to wait until Mad Nat, uh, John Ballantyne, rejoins the podcast... And he and I can just go off on all kinds of stuff, Mass Effect. We'll probably just have a whole Mass Effect podcast where all we're going to talk about is this new trailer. But I'm excited. It's They're saying Mass Effect will continue. They're letting us know they're still around. I was worried because um, Bioware honestly seemed like they were in the ICU <laughs> with uh, with a lot of stuff. You had uh, those those two heads of the studio leave, and it just, it just seemed... It just seemed bad, so it's just they're, they're reassuring us. They're giving us something to to look forward to. There's no release date yet, but I'm excited for there to be a future Mass Effect game. I'm glad it looks like they're maybe acknowledging Andromeda. I know a lot of people didn't like Andromeda. You guys know my opinion on it. Um, I didn't care too much for the gameplay and all that, but at least I thought, well, you know, they put a lot of effort into this story. I at least want to see this story out. I want to see this, you know, I want to see where they're going with this as far as the story goes. But I really do think they needed to improve the gameplay because Andromeda, especially Andromeda's combat compared to, like, Mass Effect 3's combat was, it was bullshit, in my opinion. I did not like the gameplay. Uh, I know, John, if you're listening to this, you disagree, and then we could have a whole Mass Effect discussion but there was those two teasers that you know blew my mind. It's like, yay, Bioware is still alive. Maybe we'll get another good Bioware game. It's been a while. It's been a long time since we've gotten a good Bioware game. And the other two were, of course, I'm probably going to pronounce the name wrong because just the other night John was making fun of me because I could not pronounce his name wrong. But Smash's new fighter is... Sephiroth, and it's the main baddie from Final Fantasy VII. He's coming to Smash. They put him over really strong. He beat the shit out of, like, every main character, and then Cloud shows up and beats up on him. And John pointed this out when I was talking to him last night, but they, like, they did a lot of, like, homages to the Final Fantasy VII movie. And uh, I thought, oh, that was pretty cool, because I'm not a big Final Fantasy guy, Final Fantasy VII in particular guy, uh, so I didn't know all that stuff, but it, when he told me that, it was like there was a lot of fan service and care there, and it's cool we're getting another fighter, another person entering the ring. It really seems like Nintendo has a close relationship with Square now again, uh, after a long time of them not really being cool, uh, because they've gotten Cloud, now they got Seth. Eroth, Sephiroth, <laughs> I did it, <laughs> I messed it up a little bit, but I, I saved it, so uh, here's hoping maybe down the road a Final Fantasy VII remake coming to a Switch, maybe a Switch Pro, and the final thing that saved the Game Awards for me, I'm actually mixed on it, I think it's great news, it's a new title to be excited for, but I have some problems with it, and that is Perfect Dark, She is Joanna Dark is back, and we finally know what the initiative has been working on. It is a reboot, I'm guessing, of the Perfect Dark series. And I'm mixed on it because I really thought the initiative was starting their own new title. There was going to be something new from Microsoft. And I, that's kind of what I had my mind on because I was like, you know what? Uh, you know, they could, like... I remember seeing rumors that they would do Perfect Dark, and I saw some rumors, maybe possibly a new Fable, uh, though particularly the rumors actually point towards the Forza Horizon studio doing a new Fable game, but 
I was kind of like, yeah, they could do that. Or they could start a whole new series and come up with a new franchise because I really do feel like one of the things Microsoft is missing is new stuff. Now, they're doing a good job of fixing that by buying up every damn studio they can, but I, I really thought the initiative was going to come out with their own new IP, and instead they're just remaking um, Perfect Dark. And I guess it's a good thing because I noticed I'm a part of, you know, I, I, I really like Xbox, so I'd consider myself an Xbox fan. Um, and I noticed a lot of big Xbox people are like, yeah, Perfect Dark, they're gonna re we want them to remake Perfect Dark, and we, we need a new Battletoads and all that. And I, I do think that Microsoft sat there and listened to the fan base, and they're wanting to deliver on that. I mean, hell, we got a battle, new Battletoads game after, like, years of us not having one, and I think people were so focused on getting a new one, they didn't think, well... How good would a Battletoads game be? Because Battletoads itself was not that great of a game. It's just nostalgia there, um, and you're it, it. It's yeah. It, it's I played some of the Battletoads, uh, the new one. It, it's okay. I I enjoyed it somewhat. I played it with my my girls, but like I I always thought it was like this misplaced this like. It's almost as if Xbox fans have this, like, oh, well, we got to have all these IPs just like Nintendo and Sony. So, oh, yeah, we got Battletoads. Oh, we got Perfect Dark. Oh, we got Halo and Gears. Yeah, of course you got Halos and Gears. But, you know, they're they're always grasping at straws, it seems. And that's when they grasp towards Battletoads and Perfect Dark. And I feel like, yeah, you want to do that. You want to um, please your fan base. But at the same time, it's kind of like... You know, do we really need a Perfect Dark series? Does that really fit in the world today is kind of how I feel. I mean, it, I'm sure they're going to do a great job and it'll be a good game and I'll enjoy it. But I was I was I really had my heart set on something new. I want to be I want to see something new. I want to see a new world. I want to meet new characters. Um, and honestly, uh, the initiatives Perfect Dark game is just going to be like, oh, show me your take on the Perfect Dark series. Because I've already played this character and played in this world. I mean, sure, it's probably going to be different from the old games. And maybe it'll be something new and refreshing. But at the same time, I want something completely new. I want, like... And it doesn't really count as an Xbox exclusive because it's on everything else, too. And that's the Outer Worlds. Something new like that where it's new world, new characters, new things to explore. They don't have a whole lot of that. Uh, PlayStation, on, on the other hand... While a lot of their games, gameplay-wise, are the same, a lot of their games are open world, third person, you got some crafting elements, you got a little bit of collecting in there, you got some RPG elements, too, with their games leveling up your character, you know, not too big, you know, too deep RPG, but enough there, um, so, and, and some platforming, too, you gotta have platforming, and a lot of narrative-driven games, too, it has to be narrative-driven, that's basically every fucking Sony game, um, Days Gone, <laughs> Ghost of Tsushima, Ghost of Tsushima, um, hell, even Spider-Man. You know, they all kind of fit in this mold. Their gameplay is slightly different in all of them. I mean, freaking Uncharted. Uncharted has a lot more like cover-based shooter elements to it, where Spider-Man obviously doesn't have that. But you, you know, you really look at it; they they are a lot alike. That being said, even though the gameplay kind of repeats itself a lot with their with their games. Every game has a different world, a different story, different characters. It's different narratively. It's it's that's one credit I'll give Sony. All of their games when they make these new games, it's at least something different. They're always wanting to give a new world and a new story. Sometimes that's to Sony's detriment too because a lot of times I feel like Sony will drop a franchise franchise after they've you know, had a few successes, like Crash Bandicoot was a good example, I think, uh, the original three were PlayStation exclusives, that Naughty Dog did them, and then they're like, oh, let's sell this franchise off and do something else, so sometimes I feel like Sony will abandon a character or a franchise, but still, they're always giving something new to, ex to have and to explore, and I feel like this is a missed opportunity for Microsoft's initiative, like, I feel like we could have had something new, 
But instead, we're going to have this old series, and they're going to try to resurrect it and make it successful, and it probably will be. I mean, hell, they got the guy who rebooted Tomb Raider and brought Tomb Raider back from the dead. So it's highly likely that we will get that with this title. Maybe it'll be fun. I'll love it, and I'll be like, hey, I was wrong about, you know, being hesitant about Perfect Dark. But at the same time, I feel like we missed an opportunity to have something new and unique. Instead, we're kind of going down that retro path of, hey, remember Perfect Arc on 64? Well, here we go. We've rebooted her, and it's going to be great and awesome. I don't know. I just feel like there's we could have had something special. And, I mean, Perfect Arc, the new one, might be special, but it's not the same. It's it's like I know what world I'm getting now uh, where if they would have went with a completely new IP, it would have been a world that I don't know about. It would have been something new and exciting. Uh, like Cyberpunk 2077 before it gets released, and then you find out it's just the Xbox One version, even though you have the Xbox Series X, and it could do ray tracing and stuff. But you don't get that. But that's another story for another time. And with that, let's move on to a new portion I'm creating for the podcast where I just kind of go through each major console manufacturer or major console, kind of just talk about um, any news happening with the big three that being nintendo xbox and playstation and i'm gonna start with nintendo and this new game coming out that looks really interesting i believe it's called hazel sky i might have the name wrong but hazel sky it looks like a mixture of a bunch of games it definitely looks like they're like huh that Last of Us 2 guitar section was very popular. Let's put that in our game. But then it also has some elements that were also in Jedi Fallen Order, which was also a really solid single-player experience game. It, it, I'm interested in the world. The, I love the, the graphical presentation. It looks like it's going to be possibly a day one buy for me when it is released. Uh, and with that, also I mentioned earlier uh, a Switch Pro possibly for the... Final Fantasy VII Remastered game, possibly getting a port for it. Well, everything Nintendo has said recently, and you can look it up, I believe there's an interview with Doug Bowser, and I think also the president of Nintendo has also nixed that idea. Now, they haven't flat out said there isn't going to be one. They just said the Nintendo is selling so, the Nintendo Switch is selling so well, and they have so much momentum going for them with the Switch Lite and the uh, original docked Switch that they don't see a need to have a Switch Pro. And that is true. They've had, like, you can look it up, Google it. They, I think they're on their 24th straight month of being the best-selling console in the U.S. That means the Switch has been be- beating out the PS4, the Xbox One, and even now with the month of November, they've been beating out the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and Series S. Uh, as far as sales go, they've still been beating them so it's a very successful console they have a lot of momentum going but i will say the the exclusive exclusives have kind of been light and then we haven't heard anything at all i don't think about breath of the wild 2 metroid prime 4 so on and so forth so we got a lot of big titles coming out and then also you're gonna have to start competing with the ps5 and the xbox series x they have only just begun and it's going to be harder to get ports to your system of new games and i really think nintendo is missing an opportunity here um i think they will have a switch pro at some point sony and microsoft have both shown that you can do a mid-gen refresh with your console and have a beefier console and consumers will buy that and um I don't see them doing it within the next year, and I don't think they have to. I think Nintendo, with the Switch and the Switch Lite, can go throughout all of 2021 and and be fine and just ride that success. 2022, I think, is going to be when they're going to need to start talking about some upgrades. And I think by the end of 2022, a Switch Pro should be in the cards. A Switch Pro docked and light version. Um... And uh, I think maybe release it at the end of the year, and that way you have two years of people still in buying Switches and Switch Lights, and at the end of the year, like, hey, look, we got this. Even for the dock Switches, you could even go, hey, buy this dock, um, and 
you know, it'll, if you play the game inside the dock, you'll get enhanced pro, like, you know, games, and, um, it'd be, like, almost kind of, kind of like a callback to the red expansion pack that you bought for the N64 to help boost, uh, boost the, uh, 64's performance, they, they could do that with the docked one, and then they could release a new Switch Lite Pro, so if you wanted it on the go, you would have a whole new system, and you could have, like, a docked for the old Switches, it would kind of pretty much make all the old docked Switches home console versions only, and, um, I could see them doing something like that, or maybe just coming out with a whole new console with a dock, but I, I really don't, they seem to really be set on the portable version if it's just me like anytime i see advertisements it's always for the switch Lite, not the original switch model but i could see them doing that at the end of 2022 and um they would still support the original switch and the switch Lite, just like they did with the with the new 3ds and the old 3ds's but at a certain point i think probably by the end of 2023 or even 2024 they'd have to start saying all right well you know, the the, the original Switch and the Switch Lite can't handle these new games, so we're just going to focus on the Switch Pro. Um, and, you know, that's no different from what Xbox is doing. They're going to support the Xbox One at least until 2022, I believe they said. So so I, I kind of see Nintendo going that route if they're going to do it. I think they are definitely going to do a Switch Pro. Uh, that's my opinion on it because... Um, you know, it there there's no way you're gonna get Wolfenstein three to run on the the base switch. There there's just no way. When Wolf when the next Wolfenstein comes out, I don't see it getting ported to the Switch easily. Unless they're gonna do cloud gaming. That could extend the life of the Switch. Maybe they'll go with cloud gaming, but I really do see a refresh for the Switch coming. Not coming next year, but I'm going to I'm going to put my money for 2022. I think 2022 would be when we would see a a model or a skew refresh and we would get new switches that would have beefier um beefier CPUs and GPUs in them so they could not necessarily be like 4 I mean you could probably do it like 4K. It could probably be make the Switch Pro be about like a PS4 Pro or an Xbox One X but not be anywhere near, like, the PS5 or the Series X. But, yeah, that's kind of where I see Nintendo going. Uh, But really, like they said, they don't really, in the near term, have to worry about console refreshes because the Switch is still selling, like, hotcakes. Um, I believe I saw a news article, you guys can look that up yourselves, where Nintendo has already reached the Wii level as far as the value of their company. So things are going great for Nintendo. I would just say, damn it, we need more info on Breath of the Wild 2 and all those. But then, got to understand, guys, pandemic, It's it's been very challenging this year for developers. And that's probably changed up their timetables. So we might have, you know, had we not had a pandemic, we might have been hearing about these, you know, about Breath of the Wild 2 and the next Metroid Prime game by this point. We just don't know. Um, so we do have to be patient and understand that, hey, you know, a once in a hundred year pandemic is going on and it's been challenging for them to, you know, work on these games. And I would rather the people who are working on these games be safe than get this new Zelda game out faster for me. I think their safety is paramount to my entertainment. My entertainment can wait, you know, let's make sure you guys are safe, but also able to work and provide for your families and that's all about i have to say on nintendo let's move on to xbox well i already discussed a lot of the big xbox news in my game awards section of this podcast but what i can talk about is i know i'm about a month or more late to the party here but i was able to secure an Xbox Series X. I was one of the lucky few who got through the day they opened up pre-orders. I got through Microsoft's site and was able to order myself an Xbox Series X, and it arrived the day of release. Hooked it up, and so far I have thoroughly enjoyed my my new Xbox. In particular, um, the controller, while it's not, you know, reinventing the wheel, 
it it's a solid controller. It is. I I love the Xbox One controller and the Series X controller. Pretty much keeps keeps on going with what the Xbox One controller was already doing, but they have a dedicated share button, which really adds to it. And I, I like the kind of textures that they put on the um, the the trigger buttons and the back of the controller. It felt that the texture is is really nice. The grip. Um, but uh, but like I said, they're not reinventing the wheel. Uh, the sad thing with uh, Xbox Series X, there's really no game so far that I feel like has truly taken advantage of or was made specifically for the Series X. That being said, like it was so easy. I plugged the thing up, turn it on. Um, I have the Xbox app on my phone. I just scan a QR code and my profile was downloaded. All my information was there. I didn't have to log into shit. And it was just a smooth experience. It was great. Um, I, you know, the they they haven't really changed their menu. They updated the Xbox One's UI earlier this year. That's essentially what you get with the Series X. So there's no new UI, but that's kind of a good thing because if you're wanting people to migrate over, you don't want things too different. Um, I'm okay with it. Uh, I, it, it's not like, oh, this is the greatest UI I've ever experienced. It's, it's just a UI, but it, it is like, I already know how to navigate it. Cause it's, it's the Xbox one UI. Essentially the biggest feature that I love is for one, the SSD super fast. The fact that you can plug up your externals from your Xbox one into the series X and just play the games. If you want to do it that way. Now you won't get to take advantage of the SSD technology, but you'll still be able to use those externals and enjoy those games. Uh, you just have to deal with loading screens where if if you have it in the SSD, loading screens are almost non-existent. I mean, the longest loading screen I think I've had to deal with is like five seconds long. <laughs> like, And that's the longest. Uh, it feels like everything loads really fast. And it's great, but that quick resume feature is the best because I can be juggling two or three games and, like, I'll be playing, say, Cyberpunk 2077, and then I get tired of it because it, it's not what I thought it was going to be. So I start playing Gears Tactics. I get super into Gears Tactics, and then I'm like, oh, let me jump back over to... Uh, uh, Ghostbusters Sanctum of Slime because I'm still trying to beat that game because I have this huge back catalog and I need to get through it and that's one of the games on the back catalog and then I'm like alright well let me jump back on Gears Tactics and quick resume just takes me back exactly where I was and I, then a week later after or roughly almost a week later I was like I haven't played Cyberpunk 2077 so let me jump on that and I'm exactly where I was in Cyberpunk 2077 so it's just like you don't lose a beat it's like you're exactly where you are. You don't have to load the game back up and go through loading screens and load up a save file. It just saves your spot where you were at. So it gives you the opportunity to juggle. You can be juggling several games at once. So it's just like, you know, let's say one day or one night, one game session, you're playing a game, uh, and then you move on the next day or for the rest of the week you play a different game, but then you can, with quick, quick resume, you just pick up right where, exactly where you were. Now, of course, if it's a multiplayer based game you're not going to get you know to go pick up right where you left off but for a lot of the single player games it's it's great yeah i cannot praise this feature enough it is awesome and not really on the ps5 from what i've seen so uh it, it's it's great so and, and then also the fact that i am guaranteed series x enhanced updates for a lot of my games I've already gotten quite a few of them, but one in particular, Cyberpunk 2077, when I get that free update, I will actually play and enjoy that game instead of the blurry, textured mess that I'm currently dealing with. And no, I'm not going to justify that game's having that game have its own subject on this podcast until it fixes its issues. And that that's all I'm going to say about that in particular. So, needless to say... I'm enjoying my Series X, and so far, it's probably going to be my utility console. It's going to be where I play all my multiplats. It's going to be where I get my Microsoft exclusives, of course, but it's going to be my workhorse, I believe, because 
I, you know, very satisfied with my my Xbox One and the Series X is a lot of that plus new features like quick resume and of course that dedicated share button is nice, that controller is nice, uh, the SSD and the fast loading is nice. So I'm very happy with that product. And moving on to the PlayStation 5, I was able to secure a PlayStation 5 as well. I was lucky. Uh, I got it like, you know, directly through Sony. I don't know how. I got through and I was able to order it and get it. And the PS5 is, it was very, very glitchy when it first came out. It was having trouble with the external hard drives. It wasn't getting along with the external hard drive. I'd get like this green screen and you know I could hear the the background music and then I would turn the PS5 off, unplug the external and turn the PS5 back on and it would run fine. It was the weirdest thing. I would get weird crashes and all that. And I've I think they patched a lot of that out. It seems to be running a lot smoothly, a lot smoother now. But the PS5's launch was not, and I repeat, not smooth at all. But that being said, the one thing I have enjoyed about the PS5 is I've gotten my first truly next-gen experience with Spider-Man Miles Morales. Um, that That is one thing I didn't say with the Series X. There isn't a game, really, that I can point to that I feel is next-gen quote unquote and with PS5 at least visually uh Spider-Man Miles Morales feels like it's a step up from what I played last generation and in particular the DualSense controller itself uh not with any of the other games but with uh, Astro Boy is it or Astro whatever Astro the the pack-in game with the console the console you, the game that you get with the console it's essentially a tech demo for the haptic feedback and the, all the rumble it's it's a it's a tech demo for the new controller and that thing blew my mind just like it is awesome they took the HD rumble in the switch and they just turned it up cranked it up to 11 it is a awesome feature truly next gen and I've seen and I'm not gonna I'm not going to name names, but I've seen a, a fairly popular YouTuber, and they did a versus between the Series X and the PS5, and they wrongly said that um, all the games take advantage of the new controller. Yes, technically they do, because you do get some of that rumble feature, but not to the degree that they do in the, the Astro game. Um, the Astro game really shows what this technology can do, and the other games I played on my PS5, the rumble's there, but it's not as pronounced as as that one game. Like the thing is, like like the the shoulder buttons will give you uh will will give you uh, resistance. So if it's like a or you're having to press the shoulder button to say it's like trying to crank something, you can feel the resistance of pulling that crank. It really like. It really immerses you into the game, and, and it's it's pretty awesome. The PS5, um, I I think, is especially with this this new controller, is going to be something special if people take full advantage of that technology. Now you never know because developers, especially you know multi-plat developers, they will always go to the common do not the most the lowest common denominator, and um, you know they'll they'll design their games around the game pads for the Xbox and also the PC, and I don't see them taking full advantage of this, but hey, maybe they will, but this is something new, and I think what Sony has done with this controller is something that I think in the future will be standard uh, for all gaming controllers. It is really something special and awesome, and I've been, besides the, the rough start at the beginning, I've been mostly happy with my PS5, but again, like I said, uh, their their UI is eh. It, it's it, I get it. It's simplistic, and my games are right there, and I can get to them, and all of that. But their store is shit. Holy crap! The the PS4 had a decent store. The PS4's store it, it was decent. I can get in there. I can find the deals and all that stuff. The PS5 store is a mess. It it really like I can't go and see where the. I have to hope that Sony is posting their recent deals up like their end of the year sale and stuff like that i hope that i have to hope that it's up at the front of the page because if it's not at the front of the page i have a tough time finding where that damn shit is at 
Where with the PS4 one, you could go in there and you just go to deals and it would show you all the deals that they were having, whether it be the PS Plus deals or the whatever special sale they were running that week. So it's not even that, you know, Microsoft does it better. I mean, hell, Sony does it better on the PS4. The PS5, it's just, you can tell it's like under construction. <laughs> if you go on their UI, it's like it's a new UI, but you can definitely, you get this feeling that it's, it's not quite done yet. That's the feeling I got from it. So I'm not a big fan of their UI. And then honestly, um, like I said, the experience I have with how Microsoft's UI and Quick Resume and all that stuff is set up, I can definitely tell my PS5 is going to be like my PS4. It's going to be an exclusive box. So I'm going to get all my Spider-Mans and all my Uncharted's and all that stuff. I'm going to get on the PS4, I mean, sorry, the PS5, and most of my multiplats are going to be played on the on the Xbox, unless there's something special that's only you're you're only able to get on the PS5, like with Marvel's Avengers multiplat game. But Spider-Man is only on the, the PlayStation version, so I'm only going to play the PlayStation version. So with that being said, I can wrap it up wrap this up by saying I'm satisfied with both of the new consoles with me leaning more towards the Series X right now. Maybe that will change. Maybe down the road I'll be like, oh no, multiplats are running better on the PS5 and maybe I'll just have the Xbox be around for the Microsoft exclusives. Maybe. We'll see. It's too early in the generation to say either or. I'm just happy and lucky enough to own both of them. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about the new consoles do you guys have any of the new consoles and what are your opinions of them and now that i've just rambled through all of that stuff i can get to channel talk where i talk about what's going on on the channel now i wanted to go ahead i was actually going to have this at the beginning of the podcast but then i thought you know a lot of people aren't interested in what's going on the channel. They don't want to know all the ins and outs and the inside baseball to the channel. So essentially, if you were just here to hear me ramble about video game shit and then you spout your opinion off in the comment section below, this is where you can leave because that's all done and I wanted to rant just slightly, not rant, but ramble uh, about the channel. Now, lots of cool things happening. One, I was finally able to get a podcast done right here, right now. So, that's exciting, but the other thing is, is that I got a new series out. Well, it's kind of a new series, um, that being 2-Bit Compares. Now, I did a comparison video back in April of 2016 with Halo Reach, and I always planned to do that as a series, and I was, back then I was mainly just going to focus on backwards compatible games for the Xbox One, because I thought that was a huge deal. I was just like, besides the Wii U... No one else was doing backwards compatibility, and now finally someone else besides Nintendo was uh, doing backwards compatibility. So I wanted to do comparisons of, of the 360 version versus the backwards compatible version of the game, but it just fell through the cracks, probably because at that time I was starting to get focused on other things in the channel, like... Um, you know, the podcast, of course, and then the reviews, they kind of got a bit um, crazy <laughs> for for a little bit, and they got, it took a lot of work to do those, so it just, it fell through the cracks, and I never got back to making them until now. So as you've seen, I compared Mafia Definitive Edition with the original Mafia game, and there is more on the way, because I actually sat down a couple of weekends ago, and play through, now I'm not doing like deep detailed like play the game entirely through and compare every level and every frame rate. I, I don't want to do, I don't want to get too deep into it, but I just want to kind of do a, a layman's kind of comparison. Where I, I play through the first, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of a game and I compare you know, uh, gra you know, I look at the difference between the graphics and if there is a big noticeable difference with frame right now, you always have like the digital foundries out there and they're always posting up and go, oh, we measured the frame rate and all that. And, and that's all well and good. And that gives you the actual scientific, you know, hey, this is the actual frame rate the game is doing. And here's the difference between these two ports of that game. And that's cool. But most people aren't going to really notice a frame rate 
dip unless it's like a really big one. You know what I mean? Like you don't need a counter for that type of stuff to know if it runs slow or runs like shit. Um, you could see it with your own damn eyes. And sometimes with some of their videos, it's like, oh, look, this one's at 60 frames, and this one's also at 60 frames, but in this one part of the game, it drops down all the way to 55 or 50 frames, and it's just like, at least with me, if I'm looking at it with my naked eye, sometimes I don't really notice that much of a dip. Uh, then again, maybe my eye is just not trained for it. But then again, that's kind of why I just want to do this little comparison series where I'm just going to do the, you know, average Joe's viewpoint on the difference between a game and see if I notice any big differences. So I'm excited for it. Um, I'm going to have quite a few episodes, you know, recorded and in the can for next year. And uh, yeah, it's cool. It's it's something new, something fresh for me to do. Well, kind of fresh because I, I did it back in 2016, but it's actually me finally fully realizing this series and actually uh, making a good try at it and releasing more content than one video from like four years ago. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Hopefully I can get some more podcasts going. I want to get back into that. I'm not going to make any promises. Uh, <laughs> suffice to say that this year has been really tough for sure it has been it's been a pretty tough year and not just for me it's been a tough year for everyone um i would actually argue it's it's been a tough few years it's uh if you ask my philosophical ass um i believe we're just at a point in human history like a lot of points in human history where we're going through some tough times and it's gonna take a while for us to get to that other side um but like right now i i think we're 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 in a we're in a tough tough spot in human human society, uh, but uh, as long as we stick together and love each other and understanding and all that good hippy dippy crap, I think we'll be okay. Um, and uh, let's do the right thing for our fellow human people. But anyway, enough about that. Back to back to video games. So yeah, I'm uh I'm excited uh to be. Uh, doing a new series, of course. I'll still have the reviews there, but like I said again, I'm wanting I'm wanting to do other stuff. So don't expect uh, that one year. I believe it was 2019, which was last year. I had a review for every month, um, and I don't think anyone should expect that ever. Uh, well, I don't want to say ever. Never say never say never. But it's not in my cards right now to do a review every month. It just isn't. I'm wanting to do other things. I'm wanting to branch out. Uh, to be honest, the reviews don't do all that great. Um, like my, my most popular video is a video where I'm ranting about um, how bad my 360 looks on a 4K TV. And that, that I've gotten tons of comments on that video, and I've gotten tons of views on that video. Now, granted, there's also a video out there of that I have that, that's a review video that's also gotten a lot of views and comments. So it's not that, you know, that every review I've done doesn't get a lot of views. It's just most reviews I've done don't get a lot of views. So with that said, I'm wanting to branch out, do different types of content, and try to grow the channel some more. Now, that doesn't mean reviews are completely going away. It's just there's going to be some different videos that I'm going to be working on and different content I want to work on and get get out there. And so instead of, like I said, getting a, re a review like every month, it might come down to, you know, a handful of reviews every year. It might just be, a you know, just a few, a couple of reviews maybe. I, I don't quite know yet. It just depends on, you know, what I'm able to do. I will say that I've gotten quite a few reviews already done and in the can and uploaded i actually have all of next year's reviews done edited and uploaded besides any any requests i get any viewer request i get is a review i will pick up and work on when, once i get some free time to do it and upload it um so like if if, if you've requested a review um i haven't quite gotten to it yet but i will get to it and i try to upload those as soon as i can um so don't think that the reviews are done. Like I said, I'm kind of repeating myself. I'll, I'll still do them. 
It's just I'm I'm this comparison series. I'm working on that. Uh, I this podcast here that I'm actually working on and about to release. It's been a while. Come on to bit, you know, get it together. And of course, like I said, uh, I want to get into a habit or a routine where at some point in the week I got to find time. It's It's been hectic in my life, but I need to find time where I set aside a few hours to live stream. And if you guys join me on that live stream, we can chat and all that good stuff. So things are looking up for the channel. I'm, I'm excited um, to hopefully be getting some new stuff out there and, and be working on some fresh stuff and getting some fresh ideas out there. There's also actually a big project that I've been wanting to do, but I'm going to need Woody. If you're listening, going to need your help with it, pal. You know what it is. You know what I want to do. And if we could somehow in the next you know, two years or so get that project going, get that project done uh, and upload it, and uh, it'd be awesome. It would be awesome. Anyway, I'm kind of getting tired here and blathering. But uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of a little channel update for the podcast. Hopefully, I will talk to you guys very soon on another podcast. Of course, keep your uh, your eyes peeled because we got reviews in the can and scheduled that will be dropping throughout the next year. We also have 2-Bit Compare videos that are also in the can and uploaded and will be dropping throughout next year. And if you guys do not hear from me here on the 2-Bit Podcast within the next week or two, I hope you guys have the most awesome and safest and also, you know, social distance, wear masks, keep your asses safe, you know, from that damn, damn virus. Um... But anyway, with that being said, I hope you guys have a happy holiday season and also a happy new year. And if I don't see you guys until then, I hope you have a happy new year and that it's a good one. And uh, yeah, with that said, stay safe and play on.